Hey guys, so brief update on the Tolarian versus MTG Finance. I guess that is already over. By the time I posted my video, complimenting Tolarian Community College on his decision to support the players with cheaper cards, especially in Standard, he went back and said, not all MTG Finance is bad. I'm not surprised. I am surprised at the speed that he went back. Many people, many of his beloved subscribers believe it was clarification, but to me, it was a retraction of his original stance, which was made very clear by Strictly Ballard MTG. He has 1,100 likes on a comment. That's crazy. Strictly MTG was just repeating what Tolarian Community College said, that whenever a product is good, or whenever the MTG finance community complains about a product, that means it's a good product for players. So what happened? Well, every video, the end screenshot is of Card Kingdom. Let me explain how MTG finance actually works. The ability of me or you to buy a ton of cards is minimal compared to a shop. The reason Rudy can buy so many cards is it's his business. It's his livelihood. He has capital. The average Magic player is not going to have $10 million in inventory. They're not going to have cash flow. Not like Rudy and not like Card Kingdom. So... I'm almost certain the Card Kingdom saw the video, saw themselves at the end of the video and said, we don't like this. The one thing you have to know about Tolarian is he takes a long time to make videos. He has been on record saying, and he is an English professor, he scripts his videos, he makes sure it's very professional. The only time I've seen him make a video relatively quickly, even then it was four or five days, was about Jeremy from Unsleeve Media. That was a very fast video. I have never seen someone walk this back as fast as Tolarian walked it back. And it's because of Card Kingdom. Now, we don't know how much Card Kingdom is paying him. Is he paying him per video, per card sold? Who knows? Per month? But we do know that Card Kingdom has a slide and a testimonial from Tolarian every single video, including the video about MTG Finance. Who has the greatest buying power in Magic? It is the stores. Card Kingdom, I'm almost certain, buys out cards. They have insider information and they buy out cards. Star City Games has been caught many times with the hand in the cookie jar, jar. The most noticeable was the enemy fetch lands, which they bought all of them from 14 to 15, and then suddenly they were $35. Did that help players? Was Star City Games looking, for, looking to help players? No. All these article writers, I mean, they... If your main income or a large subset of your income is MTG Finance, you have no buying power. Unless you are a LLC, you're a corporation, you're Star City Games, you are Card Kingdom, you are Rudy. These are stores. So I treat this as a hobby. I have a lot of disposable income, but it's still a hobby. It's not life or death. It's not food on my table. If I like Filea, yeah, I'll buy a couple hundred copies of her. But if a store likes Fetchlands, they will buy every single copy on the market. And it, it's pennies to them. It's pennies. That's the secret about MTG Finance. If you want to know who has buying power and who's manipulating market, it's the stores. Each store, a card kingdom, is equivalent to a thousand wannabe MTG Financiers. It's just buying power. That's what a store does. They sell. Guess what Card Kingdom sells, guys? Singles. You think Card Kingdom is happy that they could sell what the price of a challenger deck 
which they make a very little margin on, is the same price of the Chandra they had in singles, which they bought for less than 50%. No, singles have the highest margins of any product a magic store sells, especially online. No matter how many times Tolarian says, hey, this is a brick and mortar store, blah, blah, blah. It's not your local store. I don't care. Wedge has been on records for saying he doesn't even have a local store he goes to. He buys all his product from Walmart. I mean, he's been on record for saying this. So at the end of the day, you have an interesting scenario where I thought Tolarian Community College took a stance. I thought he was going to say, bad, MTG Finance, bad. We should have more challenger decks. So Wizard Coast wants challenger decks because they can drain that little last drop of blood from you, from their customers, right before rotation. The Obviously, the card store does not. Do you know how many car, Chandra's? Take a guess how many Chandra's Card Kingdom has. How many Hazrets? They're not happy. So instead of making 50 or 60 or 70%, depending on buy list of a Chandra, they're making like 10% on a Challenger deck. Terrible margins. The margins on a Chandra single. Huge. The margins on selling a challenger deck when it's being sold for MSRP at Walmart and Target, very minimal. And I agree with this. You know, I compliment and I will support. Make it a player game. Do not let any MTG finance people speculate in IOTA in standard. Punish them to oblivion. It's just greed. If they want to speculate, fine. You can speculate on reserve list cards. But everything else, especially modern, Reprint to Oblivion. From the beginning of this channel, I have been the biggest supporter of reprints. Many of you ask why is that the case? I think as long as it's very clear, and I couldn't be more clear to me now, standard is not something you can make money from. You cannot make money from speculating in standard because your speculation like Hazret, Chandra and Hazret would have been perfect speculations until they were reprinted into oblivion in every Walmart. I mean, they were the ideal standard speculations. They began kind of low, they went up in price, they pretty literally pretty much doubled, and then they stayed there, and now they have dropped. Modern, same, same principle. You think your Liliana the Veil was at 100 would be safe? Tamagoy wasn't safe at 150. It's 67 dollars now. Your Lilies are not going to be safe either. Trust me, they're going to reprint that somewhere. They're going to reprint Lily until she's Tamagoy price. They're going to reprint Snap until he. I mean, Tamagoy is the prime example of a card pushed down multiple times on multiple printings to a price point that's more reasonable. 70 bucks, still expensive, but at least it's not 150 or 200. I believe, and I believe stores are the ones hurting for this. This Challenger deck is not going to make them as much money as selling one Chandra. Therefore, this Challenger deck is actually a bane to them. It's a bane because they have lots of Chandras. Now those Chandras, those Hazrats, all of their standard cards, totally waste. Completely wasted. I mean, Fatal Push is interesting because they only include one copy of it. But we're talking about four copies of Heart of Kenrin. That was not a bad speculation. That was not a bad scenario. Like, I could imagine stores being, yeah, this is going to be a good card. And bam, four, four of them in a deck in Walmart. Everything is going to Walmart. And this is something that has not been addressed. The professor does not address really, he doesn't address the Walmart issue. He doesn't address the, I mean, the car stock issue. I watched the video, it was very mediocre. Meaning he didn't, or it was very middle of the road. He didn't take a stance. Jeremy, he took a stance. Uh, that was the only time I saw him actually take a passionate stance against something. He didn't take a stance against sexual offenders. He didn't take a stance against sexual offenders who are judges. 
even after which the coach admitted that they quote made a quote administration error. Like, what does that mean? Uh, you know, a technicality, right? Like, that's so BS, right? Or they admitted it. They said that they were going to now push liability in the stores. Everyone's happy now, except these stores. So these stores, if I were a store right now, and my store was not named Rudy, I would be like, hmm, let's see. Magic is trying to put liability on me, legal li liability, should something go wrong. Let's say I don't do a background check. It becomes apparent that this guy's the sexual offender. Something bad happens. Guess who might be going to jail and whose business is going to go under? It is not Wizards of the Coast. It is you, store owner. Because they suggested you to do a background check. They didn't pay for you to do it, but they suggested. And if you had questions, you need to pay your legal representative some money to answer these questions. Okay. Or you can go on Reddit where a bunch of pseudo fake lawyers are going to tell you <laughs> fake stuff. <laughs> That's the best place to get legal information, guys. Reddit. I'm joking. I'm joking. That's a joke. So at the end of the day, this is the fastest whoopsie doozy I've ever seen from anybody. Like, one day he says the MTG Finance sucks. And Strictly Better, Better Strictly, whoever says, oh my gosh, it's amazing. He gets 1,100 upvotes on a comment. Jeez, most videos don't even get 1,100 upvotes, right? Likes. Then suddenly, look, look, it's 11. I mean, come on. This is like a day ago, two days ago. Usually when the MTG finance community is against a product, it usually means that product is really good for the average player. This, keep preaching, brother. And then the next day he says, just kidding, Card Kingdom is amazing. Here's some more advertisements. I mean, come on, you guys. I, I get it. He's, he's a college professor. He has this kind of uh, look and feel about him. And not everyone's going to like me because they, like, they don't like who I am. They don't like my personality. They don't like the way I talk. And honestly, I'll, I'll be honest about this. They, you don't like me. Fine. But this is ridiculous. Like, to defend and say he's clarifying. No, this guy had a script. He read off the script. It was not what the Card Kingdom wanted. And the Card Kingdom said, Whoa, dude, what are you doing? Do you want us to take your money away? It's a business for Brian. It is 100% a business. He does not take a hard stance unless it actually affects his business in a positive way. So I am not, I'm disappointed, but I'm not at all surprised this is what happens. And I would love for him to refute me and say, hey, Car Kingdom didn't pay me for this video that I'm clearly sponsored. <laughs> I mean, look at this. Look at this. It's on every single video. What does Card Kingdom sell? Hmm, I would assume 99% of their sales come from singles, both in volume and in price. Wouldn't you say that's true? I would say it's true. And people who think Rudy is MTG Finance, they don't get it. Like, they just don't get it. He's a store. He's a blanking store. He's like a Card Kingdom. He is like, you know, he moves more product than a quote MTG Finance article writer. The volume, it's about volume. If you do it at high enough volume, you're considered a business. You are a business. If you do it and or you pretend, my biggest pet peeve about MTG Finance community and the reason I really, really have no respect for them, as I said many times, they say, I have, mm, let's say I have a million Jaces and I'm going to chat all day and spend all my time at work talking about how awesome I am about my million Jaces and I won't take a damn picture. Or I'll take a p picture on a potato camera. Somehow I own a hundred million dollars in cards, but here's a potato camera picture. But well, you can't even tell what it is. What is it? Is it even a blue card? Like, who knows? Like, 
Or sometimes they'll take a picture and then if you run the picture through uh, TinEye, you realize, wait a second, this is an eBay auction that last that like ended five years ago. It's so embarrassing. I'm embarrassed for like I'm I do not like MTG Finance. I think that you should say Wizard of Coast should come out and say it they, they are clearly stating this, by the way, even if Tolarian doesn't believe that they are. Blank you, blank you, we are gonna make all the money. Blank you, secondary market. Blank you, Card Kingdom. Blank you, Star City Games. Blank you. Next time you try to buy out the rainforests, we're going to reprint them into oblivion. We're going to call it Rain Misty Rainforest Masters. And I would love it. And who wouldn't buy that? Are you telling me no one would? Pay, people would not pay ten dollars to buy a pack which is guaranteed a fetch land? No, of course they would. Of course. Dual lands. I mean, no, I'm not going to address dual lands because other people, blah, 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 reserve list, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I don't really care. There will come a time when they run out of stuff to reprint and they're just looking to drain the player base of money and the only thing left will be the dual lands. I, I guarantee you this, in the next 10 years, they will be reprinted in a last this effort to drain every customer of their money. You look at Jace. He was just in Eternal Masters. That was like pretty recent. And now he's in a new set. Mark my words. You can take this to the bank. People will eventually get it. They're not going to eventually be this naive anymore. The secondary market belongs to Wizard of the Coast. It does not belong to Card Kingdom. It does not belong to Star City Games. And it does not belong to a player base. It belongs to Wizard of the Coast. And they are looking to make ev they are looking to drain every drop of blood from their customers. And do they want these other leeches like Card Kingdom? No. That's why you're going to see more challenger decks. I guarantee you this is Master this, master that, master this, new conspiracy set, two-headed giant set, unstable set. You guys see it, don't you? They do not want you to buy secondary market products. They want you to buy boxes and boxes and some more boxes. Anyway, that's it. Bye, guys.